Hey everyone, it is Velvet. Welcome back to more Castlevania Circle of the Moon. This will be the last of the three, hopefully, of my post-commentated adventures. Um, in the last one, we went down to the underground waterway and took care of Camilla and finally got our little, like, moon jump move that just sends us skyrocketing right into the, the sky like that. I think I accidentally wall jumped at first, but I'm like, no, I want to just ascend. Uh, and we also have this this card, which allows us to absorb elemental damage. Um, so anytime I see like an enemy of an element I don't have yet, I'm going to switch to it and just fill out my my card descriptions. Um, but otherwise, in this one, we are, for now, ascending this tower, because there are a couple places in here that we, uh, have yet to explore and now can, both because we can push block and because we can ascend to the sky. There's probably- yeah. So, right- wow, these bloody swords are just- I run into them all the time. So yeah, we get some, some MP here. We take care of some marionettes. And... <laughs> Man, that fire just eviscerates, huh? I think right now I'm looking at that square. Yeah, I'm looking at that, like, empty square there and going, Come on, there's, like, gotta be something there. They wouldn't just put an empty square, would they? Um... And as far as I can tell, there's no entrances on the sides. More on that later, because... Actually, more on that now. Uh, I say on the sides because I do discover later in this video that, at the very least, the roofs can have breakthrough walls as well. Um... And who knows, maybe the Florkens as well. The Florkens as well. That is a masterfully constructed sentence. But, yeah, I was under the impression that it was only the the walls that you could break through. But, no, you can break through the ceiling and probably the floor as well. So there might actually be something in that empty square that I just missed because I didn't think to jump to the ceiling below it. But in this room, we push our block, and I believe there's max HP. Yep. And now I believe I'm going to that... The a lot of empty area just above us. Rest in pieces, Succubus. Man, 76.8% map completion, huh? We are, uh... Certainly getting there. And then the last quarter of the game, I guess. Depending on how long the remaining areas take. Because I do also discover an area that I'm, like, terrified to go in. But more on that later. Uh, I already have electricity, do I? No, I... Yes, I do. Man, taking care of the Thunder Demons that fast with just a little bit of fire sure is fun. Um, again, might be a hole in the ceiling here. I have no idea. I didn't think to check that. Uh, that is, unless there is a hole on the opposite wall, which I don't remember. I don't think so. But... I'll see you once I hobble my ass over there. I don't know- I don't know why I'm still platforming. There we go, that's what I should be doing. Just throwing myself to the goddamn moon. There we go, now that we're in this room... Yeah, nothing... Nothing through this pillar that we can break. Again, maybe something in the, the floor above, maybe something in the ceiling below. Who knows? Not me, but certainly some viewers do. 
I'm sure there are people that know this game like the back of their hand, where all the secrets are. That is not me, unfortunately. But maybe one day. Probably not, as I have to keep checking the map every, like, two seconds. <laughs> like I did just there. So I, I don't really... Not really good at navigating this map, but I also feel like this this map is kind of unintuitively laid out in some ways. Or maybe it's just because there's easy access to a map that's largely unintrusive that I keep checking it so I don't just learn the route the the world super well. Cause like that that's a thing. When you have a tool, you become reliant on it. But when you don't have a tool, you learn uh, different ways to sort of work around it. Like... Like the uh, Dark Souls games in Bloodborne. Those don't have an in-game map, and I know them fairly well. It's super confusing at first, but like once you get it, it's not that hard. Um, what am I doing here? Oh, I know what I was thinking. I looked at the door that was up above, and I'm like, eh, that brings me to a new area. Or, presumably, the door brings me to a new area, and I would rather explore the rest of the world first, so I don't want to enter that door. So instead, I'm running around with a reckless abandon down here, doing a thousand damage to the... the the level one zombies. Jesus Christ, guys. You're getting absolutely eviscerated. Like, there's nothing left. I walk into you and there's just a pile of dust. No, not even dust. The dust is gone. Like, I, I don't know. I feel like this is just a bit overkill. But, like I've said before at some point, I don't know if in this series, I don't think so, but I, I've definitely said this phrase before. No kill like overkill. Um. But yeah, to return to my thought, maybe the reason I keep checking the map so much is that there's... Because there's a map. So my mind just automatically relies on it and learns the world a lot less than I otherwise would have. But then my counter-argument to that is Super Metroid. I don't use the map in that game, and I don't think I ever really have, despite it, like, being there and being very readily available. Because I think Super Metroid just has a very well-designed world that's very, like, recognizable. Every area looks unique, and the way it's laid out is intuitive to me. Whereas, I don't get the same feel from Circle of the Moon. Like, the, the pixel art and, like, the areas, I think, are genuinely very impressive looking. But the room layouts are all kind of the same. You know what I mean? But then, counter-counter-argument is back to... I could probably learn this world without a map if I wasn't using the map, because uh, I did the same thing with the original Metroid, which is very well known as a game with kind of unintuitive layouts where a lot of rooms look the same because of limitations, mostly. Uh, and that game doesn't have a map, but... I played Metroid 1 very recently. I, I did it on this channel for the first time. Um, go check that out if you haven't. I'm very fond of that playthrough. And I very much was able to find out and learn my way through the world, but I also kept my own map, so maybe that helped matters. And also, that game map is much smaller than this one, or at least I think. Is it? I don't know. I don't- I can't really compare- I think- I think it's smaller. 
I hope it's smaller. That was an NES game. This is a Game Boy Advance game, if I'm correct, yes? So it should have more space, but... Yeah, yeah, I think so. But we could go back and forth on this all day, I think. The, just the fact remains that this game world hasn't stuck out in my mind as much, so I just don't know how to navigate it as efficiently as I do other games in the genre, or other games with comparable, confusing worlds that you have to navigate, like Dark Souls. But, who knows? I sure can't give an unbiased opinion. I've been playing this game for, for so long. I'm already stuck in my ways on how, how I've approached this game. And I will continue to keep checking the map, or at least on this playthrough. Uh, I do know that there are other modes you can unlock. So maybe I'll play those on my own for sure. But maybe I'll better navigate the world without a map in those. Um, I know it's not like, say, Richter mode and Symphony of the Night, or like Julius mode, I believe, and Aria of Sorrow. I've only watched a Let's Play of that one, I haven't played it myself. I do intend to, to play it on, on this eventually, um, but I need to get to it first. Um, where it, it's not, I know it's not like you're playing as like a different character, it's just like, it gives you a different set of stats and conditions, I think. I think there's multiple. That's just what I've read, anyhow. Uh, I'll have to actually unlock those modes to know for sure. But either way, I'll, I'll play those on my own for sure, alright? Um, I think one of them's in the achievement list. I know there's more than one, or at least I think there is, but I know one of them's in the achievement list, so at the very least I'm doing that one. Uh, um... Werehorse. <laughs> I've been kind of just loosely paying attention to what's happening on screen and just rambling. Um... <laughs> so... <laughs> I forgot about Werehorse. What? An enemy. Like, that, why not, right? There's werewolves, why can't there be, like, were things of. There's were hogs in, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> so why can't there be wares of. I think that's a were jaguar right there. So, yeah, 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 sure is. Man, imagine getting turned into a were beast, but it's for an animal you absolutely hate. Like, if you hate wolves, and then you become a werewolf, that'd be, like, the worst thing ever. But also, there's- it's always, like, where- I was about to say it's always where animals of, like, prey, or predator animals, but a horse is not a predator animal. A horse is a kind of a prey animal. But, like, imagine- imagine being, like, a were- a were pigeon or something. Something that just, like, is not known for its power or anything. <laughs> That'd be, like, the worst deal, unless you really liked that animal. <laughs> A were goldfish. <laughs> just every full moon, you just have to, like, rush yourself to, like, the bathtub, or you drown in air. Oh, that would be awful. <laughs> I should post-commentate more often. I'll come up with more just absurd scenarios like this. Uh, but I do, I do like live commentary more typically, especially in the case of like a game like this that I'm playing for the first time. I think live commentary is just like much more what you want from a blind playthrough. But I do think I'm coming up with some quality commentary while just <laughs> leisurely watching my old gameplay and letting myself just 
<laughs> take my stream of consciousness to whatever station it ends up on. I mixed metaphors there. Um, <laughs> train of thought to the, the weird stations. There we go. God, what is wrong with me? Like, truly. Why do people let me say words ever? I ask that question every day. And people are always like, I have no idea, my dude. One day, a, one day you will stop. And then occasionally people are like, oh, because your words are wonderful. And I'm like, fuck off. No, they're not. I'm a goddamn just... I haven't had my marbles for a very long time. <laughs> How dare you be nice to me when I'm saying absurd, cursed things. Ah, <sighs> we ascend more and more. And what do we got up here? I think I immediately turn around. Yeah, because I'm like, hmm... Let's explore the rest of this room first before I send myself up into the stratosphere, into wherever that takes me. <laughs> if I can land on the platform. Hey, wind armor. Hey, bud. How dare you? The problem with relying on the cross so much is you run out of hearts eventually, and then it's like, well, now I don't have the cross when I need the cross. And that's, uh, not very fun, especially when you're coming across, like, death, which is, as you saw before, significantly easier with the cross. Oh my god, just land on the stairwell, it's not that hard. And here we are at the observation tower. I can't believe I immediately cut off the music of the Observation Tower, because this is, um, like, THE Castlevania theme, in my eyes. And it's getting mauled by the occasional slowdown. But, like, I... I love this song dearly. It's so good. In fact, I'm going to shut up for a little bit to just let this song play. Stop pausing when the music is playing! Anyway, if you haven't noticed, uh, when Legion touches you, it curses you, so you can uh, no longer use your whip for a little while, and goddamn Legion design is very grotesque now that I'm, I'm looking more at it. Because, like, normally Legion is just, like, a mass of bodies in Castlevania, and it's usually a boss. But, like, here it's just, like, multiple faces with giant tentacle tongues, and it's like, eh, that's... interesting. Hmm. I'm very afraid of these wind armors, aren't I? I don't know why, they're not that... threatening. They just, like, shoot very far away, like that, so it's mostly just a spacing thing. If you can space well, then they're no problem. It's just, if you are reckless and approach them with wild abandon, then then you get punished. Which is very true of uh, most enemies in this game. So, <laughs> I think now I'm like, you know what? Oh, I thought I was just like, no, I don't want to fight these guys anymore. And I was just going to jump over them, but I guess not. Do I do it with this guy? No, I just jump over him so I can fight him from the other side. I guess the strategy I found is just jump over him when he attacks. 
which is not a terrible way to go about it, for sure. <laughs> the cross on the backswing hitting this, guys. And hey, we got uh, an HP up. And now the long trek out of these, these corridors. They're not really corridors, because they're like exposed to the the sky, so they'd be more... They're, it, it's more just like the castle walls, I guess. We're on the... Um, there's a word for this. Not... My mind wants to say ornament, but that's not correct, because ornament just, like... means weapon. Battlements? Yeah, battlements. That's the word I'm looking for. We're just sprinting along the battlements out there. It was a meant word, that's why I got ornament. But no, I needed to choose a word that started uh, one letter later. Next up is finding a, a word that starts with C and ends with meant. Uh, I'm not going to... I'm not going to hunt down what that word is. I know there's, like, an abridged series of Code Geass called, like, Code Ment or something. I've never watched it. I think that's where the I'm at Soup video comes from, though. Um, these Minotaurs hit super hard, and they, they just use the same downward swing over and over again. But, like, it works. It hits hard, and it covers a lot of area. I don't know if that area... Oh no, yeah, it, it comes to a stop at a certain point. I'm like, I don't know if that area has a limit or if it just keeps going into a wall, but then it phased through the wall, so that um, is my answer. So, uh, now we know. Ah, uh, the Legion. Uh, Labyrinth. The sort of like stained windows on the back of this like background, it's kind of cool, isn't it? The like, the Simon Says pattern. Kind of eye-catching. Though, no, that's the end of the thought. I don't know why I said though, there was nothing, there was nothing following that. Right now we're just... Why is that ascension on the left there? There's gotta be, like, a, a wall I can break through on that side. There's gotta be. Because otherwise, there's... Other than, I guess, to fill space, there's no real reason to, like, put that there. I checked that wall, of course, but not, like, the wall that's, like, suspicious. Well, that wall has a, an opening. It gives me... I never knew how to pronounce this enemy's name. I do know I'm standing here. I think I just assumed I had the stone immunity equipped. I don't know why I did that. Oh, I think I was testing to see if it petrified me. And then I'm like, okay, if it petrifies me, then I'll get my uh, stone immunity from it. But yeah, Catoblepis? That doesn't sound right. Google, help me. Catoblepis pronunciation. All right, YouTube. Uh, Catoblepis? That doesn't sound right. Catoblepis. I mean, I, I, 
I guess if that's how it's pronounced, then that's how it's pronounced. It just doesn't sound right. All right, cool. <laughs> right, I'm like very threatened in here because of all the damage I'm taking. And I'm like, oh god, oh god, do I have a potion or meat or something to heal? I don't think I do. Uh, time to just get myself the hell out of there. And I determined that this was far enough away. And it was. So now I'm adequately healed. And ready to continue to take on uh, the evil pillars and whatever that bird creature was. I did not read the name when I had the chance. What was it? Uh, I guess we'll figure that out soon. Yeah, I think right now I'm just deciding to ignore the Minotaurs because they take so much. It, it's always embarrassing when you take like a minute to heal and then there's a health upgrade right in like the next room. But yeah, the Minotaurs, I'm like, ah, these take way too long to kill. I just want to figure out what at, what's at the end of this room. And I guess now that I've figured out what's at the end of this room, I'm like, okay. Now we can kill them. To, to I think I was testing how much experience I got. I think it's like a flat 2,000. I don't remember, and I wasn't paying attention enough while re-watching this footage. Uh, in order to keep that in mind. Because... Uh... That's not present me's concern, uh, if I'm being real. It was a siren, okay. I think I was just like, are, th oh god, the doula haunts. I think I was just like, are they worth fighting, or should I just skip them? And clearly I determined, yeah, they, they give you enough experience that they are most certainly worth fighting. God, the Dulahans are so annoying, because they just outmaneuver you in every way. Their attacks are super predictable, and, like, that's how you're supposed to figure out how to combat them, because they just run back and forth, but they move so fast that it's just like, please, leave me alone! I'm just trying to sprint! And then they sprint faster than you and go, on guard, fuckboy, you are not, uh, continuing. And then I go, yes, Mr. Dulahan, sir. Right away, Mr. Dulahan, sir. Hey, stylish suit. That's pretty nice. I forget what the stats are. Uh, it's not better than the rainbow robe, but... Did I equip the rainbow road? The rainbow road? Yeah, I equipped the entire rainbow road. Specifically the Mario Kart Wii version that it's super easy to fall the hell off on. Um, though also the Mario Kart 64 one is also a very good choice considering how long that track lasts unless you jump uh, across the course using the glitch and like cut it in half, which I very much like to do. I love 64's Rainbow Road, but goddamn is that such a long course. Alright, I think I checked the bottom path, and I'm like, huh. Alright, what is, uh, down here? Oh, uh, an Alrane. And I'm like, damn, this, this, this girl does not take a, a lot of damage. Um, but what I'm doing, what I'm doing wrong here, is that I am hitting the flower rather than the woman in it. If you hit the... <laughs> If you hit the woman in the flower, it does a lot more damage. Sometimes you realize the words that you're saying, and you're like, huh, that sure is a funny string of words that I hope doesn't get taken out of context. That is the, the danger of stream of consciousness, after all. It's an absolute curse. Yeah, 
almost 100 damage as compared to the, like, 11 and 9 you deal by hitting the flower. So much more efficient. The short nines are, like, still helpful when she's, like, in the flower, though. Like, that does add up a little bit. This guy, uh, the third tier of the, the demon enemies shoots three times, by the way. The first tier shoots one wave, the archdemon shoots two, and then the demon lord shoots three. And we get some MP at the end of this, and I, I think I decide to take advantage of that MP and go, you know, I'm super low on health right now. Which I think was the correct choice. And now I think I'm looking at the the area on the left, like the top left that I didn't explore and going, huh, I wonder what that room is. I'll check that later. And then I walk in here and then this room is absolutely huge. It's just like a cathedral, an auditorium. I don't know why I said cathedral. A cathedral is a religious uh, building. And I'm like, oh, is this like a giant boss room? Is there going to be just a door on the other side? There sure is not. I wonder what that room is. Hey, it's dark armors. These guys are super dangerous. But yeah, th this is this is an auditorium, like an opera stage. Not not a religious cathedral. I don't know why that was the first word that came to my mind. Uh, but the dark armors sure do not want to let me through. And then I come out here, see more dark armors, and then I decide to double back. Because I'm like, well, what if that room hold something. What if it's a save point? That'd be very remiss to skip over that, especially when this area is kind of thrashing my ass. So, back back through the auditorium we go, through the, the room of the shades. This isn't where I need to go. That's the Alrane room. Um, and then the real struggle is going back through the, the Dulahan room. But, uh, we must. Wow, I get hit by the first possible one, huh? I am not very good at avoiding these Dulahans, I see. I'm atrociously bad at avoiding these Dulahans. I'm surprised I didn't die on my way back. Like, I know I didn't, but I'm surprised that I didn't, you know? But we, we've made it back to this room, so we can... <laughs> Dodge the siren. Just barely. Please get through the opening. I'm begging you. And, uh, it was a save point. So we get a full heal and a checkpoint. So we don't have to repeat any of that challenge, uh, ever again. Which is incredibly a relief. So once again through through the Dulahan room I go. Am I am I just What? Like I killed them both, but what the hell was my plan there? I feel like tanking damage is not the best strategy, my dude. You can just like yeah, you can do that. You can jump over them. You don't need to kill them either. You can just go. Killing them does give you experience and makes it easier to get through the room uh, unhindered. But, like, you don't gotta. You can just zoom through it. That's perfectly fine. Retreat is a valid option. Sometimes the winning strategy is not to play.
And you all know, like, once once I'm playing again, I'm gonna make, like, the same bad choices over and over again. You know it to be true. Because hindsight is twenty twenty. I can look at this with a fresh mind and go, why am I making those choices? But then when I'm in the moment, I have to focus on both playing and commentating. I have to split my attention between two of them. So my choices are just, like, a lot, uh, less well thought out. And that's also why I have less energy in live commentating, because I'm focusing on the game itself. But I, I do... I do like playing it that way. Um... I kill the first one and then just say, you know, I don't think I gotta do this dance a second time. Even though, technically, since I'm struggling with these enemies, I think I really should be, be killing them to get more experience and thus more, more stats so I can just kill them quicker. I think that's always, I think that's kind of a, a general rule of thumb in in RPG type games of all kinds is that if you are struggling with the the standard enemies then you might not be ready for the boss you might be depending on the game like Persona 1 for example uh, you're going to struggle with the standard enemies on that game because Persona 1 uh, random encounters are an experience there's like one dungeon in the game where you have to enter, it's either alone or with two party members, and then like every enemy in the dungeon has instant kill attacks, and it's like, what the hell is this? Um, and then there's um, stackable status ailments in that game. So like you can get hit by something and a stack will go down after a turn, but if you get hit with it again, it will put another stack on it. So, encounter a group of five energy enemies who all have group sleep skills. I think you can see where this is going. <laughs> I had a very uh, disheartening experience, hey, it's the boss room, playing where I got my entire team put to sleep by enemies that could do no damage to me at all. They were hitting for ones. Um, but they kept putting my team to sleep and s maxed out the stack counter at like five. So it was just an awful experience of me waiting for just sweet release to take me. I could have reset the game. I think I did eventually, but it was just agonizing. So, maybe the the general rule of thumb of, of if you're struggling with enemies, you're not re uh, ready for the boss doesn't work for all games, but for a lot of RPGs it does. I don't think it works for this game, because this enemy right here, the like, I think they just called it the devil, uh, is incredibly strong, probably stronger than the boss, or at the very least, it's as strong as the boss in the guise of a regular enemy. Uh, and it kills me here. So, that's a bit of a tragedy, isn't it? But, here's the thing with that corridor. I still go through it. But, I ignore the demon this time. Uh, oh, I go through this room first, because this is one I ignored before with the Catabl- Catablipus. Cataplepis, <laughs> however the hell it's pronounced, <laughs> because th there is, uh, I believe, an item in here. Probably like an MP or a heart up. I don't recall which, it's one of the two. I do get turned to stone a bunch, it seems. Adds a, yeah, a heart max increase. So an extra, I think, six hearts. I think that was what it was, because I was at 62 before, I think. Uh, 
But yeah, now, um... Now I believe we go through this corridor, and I'm just like, you know what? I'm gonna ignore the devil. He is not my concern. I just want to know what's through this corridor. Uh, and that is the correct choice to make. I think I'm just trying to check the wall. Oh, no, I just ignore the walls, huh? There might be something there. There's probably something there. But yeah, this leads us to a warp point, which, um... There's not a save point next to the boss, but there is a warp point very near. You just have to go through the devil room. So, that's probably your best bet. Assuming that is even a boss. I don't actually know at this point, because I haven't entered it at this point. Uh, I chickened out and decided I'm going to explore, I'm going to go through this teleporter a billion goddamn times until I get to where I need to be. But yeah, I'm going to explore another area. And so I decide I'm going to explore this room up here with the door that I decided to chicken out of earlier. Uh, and hey, we got a, an MP max right at the top. A legion right there. Now I'm just kind of exploring the room. Ba, 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 ba. And then here we have the... I'm gonna wait till I hit it. The Fallen Angel, which has a card. However, the Fallen Angel is an incredibly powerful enemy, and I'm not doing a lot of damage to it. So, um... I decide, you know, it's barely even worth it for me to try and kill this thing. I'm still trying right now, but then I get knocked into the flashing health, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going into this area, which is the battle arena. Um... There's no music here. Very ominous. But what it does have is torches with every sub weapon in the game. So I'm like, I don't know if this is true, but there is a boss door up there. Uh, but I come to the conclusion that this is a bonus area. It's giving you all the sub weapons because it wants you to choose the playstyle that helps you the most. So if you. So you can be the most prepared for whatever is in there. So I don't know. What am I doing? I don't know if it's a bonus boss. <laughs> and I run immediately back into the battle arena room to heal. But yeah, I don't know if it's a bonus boss or if it's like... Uh, just like a Tales of Colosseum thing where you have to fight a bunch of enemies in uh, succession. But either way, it can't be... It cannot be... Uh, easy. Do I try to take care of the Fallen Angel here? I know I don't get its card. I will have to eventually, though. Yep, I do kill it. Didn't get its drop. I'll do it eventually. I'll probably get a lot of experience for doing so. So, yeah, now at this point, I'm just trying to decide. I think I figure... The room, the boss at the top is probably where I get the key to Dracula's Chambers. Then this area here is probably a bonus area, so I think I decide, okay, I'm just going to explore the rest of the map first. And once I explore everything, and I'm content that I'm not missing any hidden walls, like, I I'm going to check every wall. So that will probably... I'll probably have to go through enough enemies that it'll level me up as a sufficient point. So then I'll probably, after that, I'll end my search with the top of the tower and then go to that bonus area before confronting Dracula. I believe that that is my plan. 
So yeah, I'm going to check every wall, every ceiling, and every floor that leads to that leads to an empty space and just see what I can find. Yeah, we have this door here. We can't we can't enter it. That that'd be Dracula's chambers. Also, correction, at this point, I don't have the plan to check every ceiling and floor, because I don't know that ceilings can be broken. But I learned that, uh, very shortly. Because, see, right now I'm jumping, going to, like, the... The long... accidentally pressed this. The long stretch of, uh area, unexplored area below Dracula's Tower, and I, like, jump down this, and I hit that wall on the side there, and I'm like, oh, interesting, there's, there's something here, huh? Go in here, there's an MP Max, I jump, and by chance hit that on the ceiling, and I'm like, oh, interesting. So ceilings can be broken too, so now I know, and now I'm just standing there, like, lamenting to myself, like, oh my god, then, like, how much did I miss? Also, what the hell was that? Why did that break? Like, why was there just, like, a, a thing of bones that broke as I approached? I still don't know what the hell that's about. I presume there's, like, a way to sneak up on it and kill it, but I couldn't tell you what it was, so I just ignore it for now. We'll come back to it, we'll revisit it, maybe once we get more cards, maybe once they come up with a different strategy. Something. But, um... Either way, now I'm just trying to get to that little... Uh, what? The best word I have is shaft, but I don't like the word shaft. But also, me drawing attention to the fact that I don't like the word shaft is making it weirder. So I guess I should just say it without being weird about it. Then people won't, like, think twice about it. So I guess that's on me. I'm just gonna call it an elevator shaft. There we go. That, that cuts the problem in its roots. But yeah, up this tower, here we have another HP max increase, which is very, uh, incredibly nice. And now I believe I'm just heading to a save point. I think I realize, oh, if I ascend the tower, it's gonna take a bit longer. So let's just go to this save point down here. and wall jump off the wall. And there we go. Now we have saved, and that will be all for now. That's the end of my post-commentated adventure. So, see you next time. And also, I guess I should start saying this. If you enjoyed, please consider subscribing and leaving a like. But either way, please have a fantastic day, all right? See you next time.